So here's my latest threat assessment. It's those short little statements where I give key information about very important ethics dangers that both lawyers and the PD professionals who care about them need to know about. And today, once again, it comes from the area of technology. What a shocker. Another issue with technology. But you can't deny it. It's big, it's out there, and it's scary. And our duty to supervise, as well as our duty of competence, may have been drastically expanded by a 2015 advisory, advisory opinion out of California. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you practice. We need to know about the advisory opinions from across the country, because more often than not, states are looking at cases of first impressions when it comes to ethics, especially technology and ethics. And in California, we have a hypo about a lawyer who messed up. There was an e-discovery request, an e-discovery request was propounded upon a lawyer. That lawyer didn't understand the technicalities of e-discovery. That lawyer didn't seek help from a professional who understood e-discovery. And he let his adversary conduct an unsupervised e-discovery review of the client. The result was an absolute disaster. There were allegations of withholding and obstructing discovery, and more importantly, in the hypothetical, there was the release, unintentional but still significant, release of confidential and proprietary information to the client's main competitor. It really was a disaster. And the opinion, which is State of Bar of California, Standing Committee on Professional Responsibility and Conduct, Formal Opinion 2015-193, that's 2015-193. The opinion said a couple of interesting things. First of all, they said, quote, an attorney's obligations under the ethical duty of competence evolve as new technologies develop and become integrated with the practice of law. Very big. Our duty of competence evolves as technology generally becomes integrated with the practice of law. So this really isn't just about the need to understand e-discovery. It's really the need to understand and be competent with all types of technologies that have integrated themselves with the practice of law. Insert there cloud computing, uh, software as a service, social media, all these types of things. We've got to be competent about all of them. And it goes on to say attorney competence related to litigation general, generally requires, among other things, at a minimum, a basic understanding of and facility with issues relating to e-discovery, including the discovery of electronically stored information. Now, what's important there is that they didn't talk about just the law regarding e-discovery. They talked about understanding the underlying technology itself. And you can say that, in my opinion, about all of the other areas that have integrated themselves with the practice of law and indeed all of society, social media, cloud computing, software as a service, go on and on and on. You've got to understand from a competence point of view, not just the law about those issues, but it's starting to become that we need to understand the underlying technological systems as well. It's a big expansion of our duty of competence, and cases, or rather opinions, like 2015-193 out of California confirm that. The other very important thing that I want to mention to you, won't go on too much longer, uh, is that there's been an expansion of our most fundamental duty of supervision in a very scary way. From that opinion, it also says the duty of competence in rule whatever. The duty of competence includes the duty to supervise the work of subordinate attorneys and non-attorney employees or agents. Okay. That much we knew. And then they say the duty to supervise can extend to outside vendors and to contractors. That might be a little bit of an extent, extension, expansion of what you thought was your duty to supervise. But the really scary part is the last part. It said the duty to supervise can extend to outside vendors and contractors and even to the client itself. Yikes. Not just advise the client, not just guide the client, but we may have to supervise the client. In this situation, they were talking about e-discovery. They were talking about supervising the client's uh, 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 IT personnel. The point is, is that it looks like they have now extended our duty of supervision, not just to people in our office, associates, even non-lawyer personnel. They've extended it to contractors and vendors, people we might have thought at one point were independent contractors, but even to the client, to supervise the client in certain circumstances. Scary. Take a look at the opinion on your own, 2015-193 out of California. Very important opinion.